Welcome to our presentation. This is uh, a project on mobile push versus pull targeting and geoconquesting. This is joint work with Martin Spann, Ninja Ghosh, and Phil Breichert, and I'm Dominic Molitor. Okay. So the, the context of, a of our study is offline retailing, and uh, we know that um, even pre, uh, even post COVID, the last ma vast majority of, of consumers is still buying offline in grocery stores. Okay, at the same time, we know that a lot of consumers uh, are using their smartphones while being in a store to look up certain kinds of information, discounts, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, distances, um, and other information about products. Okay, uh, while not every retailer might like that. Um, the underlying functionalities of smartphones, including sensors, uh, which allow us to tap into location information based on GPS and, and Bluetooth low energy, essentially allow new forms of targeting uh, consumers adjacent to stores, um, which um, in theory at least gives retailers some power back uh, in terms of targeting technology, technologies that was just a privilege for um, their online competitors, okay? Now, when it comes to targeting, we can roughly differentiate between two different methods, namely uh, push and pull targeting. Push is essentially the idea that the consumer is passive and the content is pushed to the consumer based on a certain logic, okay? Versus pull, in this case, the, the consumer is considered to be the active requester of content or ads. Um, so that's the rough uh, differentiation for our study to make it a little bit more concrete. Um, in, in the case of mobile push, you would get a push notification based on a, which shows up on your lock screen, which um, essentially is follows a certain logic. Um, it could be either um, essentially a retargeting ad, or it could be context-based. For example, you walk by a certain store uh, and that store uses a so-called geofence and that triggers the notification. Uh, the other um, example is a pull. Um, in this case, you usually need a dedicated app from a retailer or a platform that allows you to proactively search for uh, certain types of uh, product information or coupons, et cetera, okay? So that's the differentiation we essentially focus on in this study. Now, when it comes to previous literature, the vast, vast majority um, has just focused on, on mobile push um, in the context mostly of coupons. Um, there's only a few studies that focus on um, pull, okay, as a, as a targeting mechanism. And uh, as a second dimension, uh, most of those push studies focus on immediate same day responses, meaning that you walk by a store, you get a notification, and then they are essentially measuring uh, if you're responding or not uh, within a, a short amount of time, okay? Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna compare, um, we wanna essentially step into that gap and we wanna compare mobile push to pull targeting conceptually as well as empirically. And including, uh, this includes the following research question, namely how does push uh, versus pull targeting affect consumers' responses to location-based coupons across different stages of the conversion funnel beyond immediate slash same day responses, okay? Now, conceptually, we have to differentiate um, between two things, two different mechanisms, namely when it comes to push, uh, as we know the, 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 the coupon is pushed to a lock screen, it's visible on the lock screen, which means that by definition, push coupons are more salient uh, by their appearance, okay? But at the same time, we also know from prior literature that they're more intrusive, meaning that um, you might question why you got that coupon at that moment. And in general, people, at least when it comes to stated preferences, don't like to be tracked, okay? So, so we have this underlying trade-off that um, consumers are reactive, uh, but at the same time, push coupons are more salient, uh, meaning that they have inherently lower search costs, but at the same time, they are more intrusive. Uh, in the case of, uh, of mobile pool, um, here you usually need a dedicated coupon app, um, but uh, usually uh, when it comes to the delivery mechanism, you proactively have to go to that app, essentially pull out your phone from your pocket um, and, and search proactively for um, the content, the, the ad, the coupon you're looking for, which means that there's more search frictions. Okay, um, but at the same time, since you have full control when and where to use the app, it's also less intrusive, okay? So to summarize, in the case of a pool, consumers are proactive, uh, but at the same time, pool coupons are less salient, so, so they, you probably incur higher search costs, but at the same time, they're also less intrusive. So we have kind of like this trade-off between um, intrusiveness and search costs and sales on the other side, which at this point doesn't really allow us to make any predictions, okay? 
As a second, essentially, dimension, though, or to like a zoom in factor, we focus on different elements of the conversion, conversion stage, namely interest, consideration, and conversion. So these are essentially the different stages a consumer has to hop through uh, in order to buy the product. Um, and here, we essentially assume that when it comes to the two underlying mechanisms, that um, that uh, essentially mobile uh, mobile uh, sorry intrusiveness and, and search costs are essentially they should be observed already early on in the interest stage. So the interest stage is in our case, the app visits. So which means that if you find uh, the app intrusive or so the, the, the targeting mechan mechanism intrusive, you might not end up um, opening the app at all. Okay, so that's essentially one way of figuring out. At the same time though, we also know that difference in app visit rates, at least temporarily, might also be caused by um, differences in, in search costs, okay, by the underlying mechanism. So, which means that we also have to look at uh, different differences in response times, okay? Um, so, which means that in general, um, we, we assume that the differences between both mechanisms and from a temporal aspect should be more uh, visible in the interest and partially in the cons consideration stage, not so much in the conversion stage anymore, okay? Um, all right, so in order to, to test essentially the different fixes of push versus pull, we conducted a randomized field experiment. We collaborated with uh, a loyalty platform in Europe um, and an offline grocery retail chain. So the requirement to participate in our experiment was essentially you had to have a mobile app um, as well as you had to opt in into uh, push notifications and the experiment ran for three weeks, okay? So the, the targeting mechanism that we make use of is so-called geofencing. So which means that um, the geofence we chose was a hundred meter around a store and upon entering that store, you would receive the coupon, okay? Um, and you would either, uh, you would receive the coupon either as a push notification or it would be um, automatically added to your coupon feed in the app, okay? Either or, so you will randomly assigned um, in, uh, to a treatment group, okay? You didn't, you didn't have any choice. Um, but the way this was implemented was uh, by using a so-called geoconquesting approach meaning that, um, that we did not uh, target the focal store. We much rather uh, targeted consumers that were entering a competitor store, um, which is again called geoconquesting. And what we then measured is if uh, in a certain time frame, uh, within four weeks upon receiving that, if they were actually came back to a focal store to redeem the coupon, okay? Um, and we didn't just do that with two stores. We did that with um, essentially uh, 4,000 focus stores uh, and uh, 6,000 targeting locations, overall 10,000 stores in uh, almost 5,000 different um, different cities in that focal state. Okay, and the way this was implemented is um, uh, was that essentially you were either again um, targeted by uh, a pull coupon, a push coupon, or uh, there was a baseline group where um, we where we um, just tracked your behavior, but you didn't get any discount, okay? And what we look at, we look at different, along the conversion funnel, a different response rates, app visit rates, coupon clicks and redemptions, as well as response times um, from that moment onward, you got the coupon. And we also know um, how much you spent uh, when you actually redeemed the coupon, okay? And again, we are, um, conversion funnel includes app visits, coupon clicks, as well as in-store redemption. Okay, and now let's look at the results. Um, so for the next three slides, uh, I will differentiate between um, essentially visits, uh, clicks and redemptions. So the conversion funnel and who we see in all three stages, um, there is a significant higher uh, response rate when it comes to visits, clicks and redemptions. Meaning that here we see that push is actually more effective than pull along the conversion funnel when it comes to uh, coupon redemption as well as all the stages before, okay? Um, we also looked at the different times you need to respond. Uh, and here we also find um, that um, in, in the case of a mobile push, it, it takes you less time to, to open the app, uh, to click on the coupon and to eventually also redeem the coupon at the store, okay? So again, um, that might indicate something regarding our uh, mechanisms later on. Um, and uh, aside from that, we, um, we also tracked uh, the expenditures and we find that um, in the case of push and pull, there's no significant difference between those. So the targeting mechanism, mechanism does not influence how much you spend, but 
the coupon itself influences how much you spend. Namely, we see there's a significant difference between push and pull as compared, compared to the baseline, uh, the group that didn't receive any discount. Okay, so there's a strong um, coupon effect. Um, what we did as a next step is we um, essentially added a little bit more covariates to make sure that uh, our effects are also holding up when controlling for a variety of things without going into too much detail. And here we see um, that when it comes to looking at the, the push row, that um, yes, we still see uh, the almost exact the same uh, essentially treatment effects, um, significant positive differences between push and pull. Okay, And the same is true uh, for push versus pull when it comes to the average time to, re, uh, to, to respond. So here we see a negative sign and this is uh, measured in hours. And we see, of course, uh, the response times are faster in the case of push. So just a confirmation of what we saw in the descriptive results. And here we can also see that there's no significant difference between push and pull, and uh, but a significant difference between both mechanisms and the baseline. Okay. Um, we also account for heterogeneity as well as uh, a couple of robustness checks, including including uh, hazard models, uh, inverse probability weighting, and also multivariate probit to essentially model all stages within the same setting. Um, when it comes to the mechanism, um, the, the idea was that salience um, can be measured by faster response times and reactants might be measured by differences in app visit rates. Okay, And what we see here to make it short that we find differences in uh, the time to consideration, which is mainly driven by the differences between push and pull. However, we don't find any differences in app visit rates as well as post um, uh, post-treatment app usage. So we see, uh, we assume that there is essentially the differences between push and pull are mainly driven by uh, salience and not by intrusiveness. Okay. Now to summarize, um, we are essentially the first study that found um, significant or that compared push to pull. And we find that mobile uh, consumers that receive push notifications are more likely to visit the app, to click and redeem the coupon and focus stores, as well as to respond faster. When it comes to the mechanisms, we uh, attribute these differences to the increased salience and thus reduced search costs in the consideration process, which is induced by the targeting mechanism. At the same time, potential intrusiveness based on push notifications doesn't seem to play a crucial role. Okay. Um, however, uh, we have to keep in mind that push coupons do not lead to more expenditures when uh, redeeming the coupon. However, we find a large uh, incremental effect of coupons itself compared to the baseline group that didn't receive any uh, discounts. Okay, now um, let me close with the implications. Um, so we saw that the choice of the targeting mechanism has an influence on com consumer responses. Overall, mobile push is more uh, more effective, but we uh, we also have to keep in mind that push notifications um, require consent. So it, it might be there might be instances where uh, mobile pull is a viable alternative when opt-in is missing as compared to not using a discount at all, okay? So, and what you also found that the average time to redemption indicates that um, mobile push is not a real time, not only a real time, meaning same day response mechanism. In fact, the vast majority of responses is happening essentially in combination with later on, maybe planned purchases. So delayed, delayed uh, responses are important. Um, and overall, we think that our results are remarkable, given that uh, we operate in a, in a privacy sensitive environment. In fact, this is European data. Um, and um, that's what I want to close with. Um, I want to say thank you. And I'm happy to receive any feedback 